Hey there guys, Paul here from the engineeringmindset.com. In this video, we'll be discussing the applications of plate heat exchangers. We'll be covering both gasket and brace plate type, as well as some micro plate and very briefly welded plate type also. I just want to take a quick moment to thank Dan Foss for sponsoring this video. If you're watching this channel, I'm going to go ahead and assume that you enjoy learning about engineering topics. If that's the case, you're going to want to check out Dan Foss Learning. It's a free e-lesson portal Dan Foss has put together. There are literally hundreds of lessons available on a wide variety of topics, including more information about heat exchangers of all kinds. You can also take exams and earn certifications to give your career and your confidence a boost. Just click the link in the video description below to start creating your free Danfoss Learning Profile and gain access to a world of knowledge. Okay, a quick test for you and I want you to tell me your answers in the video description below. Why do fluids in plate heat exchangers typically flow in opposite directions? Let me know your answers below and I'll give you the answer at the end of the video. In our previous videos on heat exchangers, we've looked in great detail about how gasket plate heat exchangers work and also microplate heat exchangers. I highly recommend you watch those if you haven't already. Links are in the video description below. Okay, let's just briefly recap on what a heat exchanger is and how these plate types work. A heat exchanger is a device used to transfer thermal energy from one fluid to another. Both fluids are completely separated by the heat exchanger. They never meet or mix. The fluids can be anything such as water, oil, refrigerants, etc. The fluids must be at different temperatures to transfer heat and heat always flows from hot to cold. There are two main types of plate heat exchangers, that's gasket type and braze plate type. Let's look at gasket type first. Gasket type heat exchangers consist of multiple sheets of thin metal arranged to create channels. The gaskets sit between each of the plates and form a seal. The seal prevents the fluids from mixing and leaking, but they also dictate which channels each fluid can flow through. Gasket plate heat exchangers can increase or decrease their heating or cooling capacity by adding or removing internal plates. They can also be dismantled for cleaning and maintenance. The materials used in the plate heat exchangers will vary depending on the fluids used, but the plates are typically made from stainless steel, sometimes titanium, and the end plates are usually made from mild steel. Meanwhile, the gaskets are usually made from rubber. Applications of gasket plate heat exchangers. You're going to find these in many heavy duty applications for HVAC as well as industrial and process engineering. Let's have a look at some examples of these. District heating and cooling. You'll find these type of heat exchangers used to connect buildings to district heating and cooling networks. The district heating and cooling center distributes the hot and cold fluids around some central pipes to form a network. Buildings are then connected to these central networks to make use of the heating and cooling fluids. To connect the buildings to the networks, gasket plate heat exchangers are typically installed between the building's central plant circuit and the district network. The central plant circuit pulls heat or cool out of the network as required, usually through a heat meter to measure the consumption. HVAC. Now you're going to find gasket plate heat exchangers used in many HVAC applications to indirectly connect chillers, boilers and cooling towers to central plant systems. They're also used for economizer circuits and heat recovery circuits to reduce the cooling load on the chillers. Industry and manufacturing. Many industrial plants will use plate heat exchangers for things such as pasteurization and waste heat recovery. For example, a manufacturing plant may use chilled water to cool down a hot, newly manufactured beverage product. The hot, finished liquid product needs to be cooled down before bottling, so it passes through a plate heat exchanger which is connected to a cooling circuit of a chiller. This extracts the unwanted heat without the two fluids mixing. If we just consider some of the pros and cons to using gasket type, well, the pros are that it can be dismantled for cleaning, the heating and cooling capacity can be changed, and parts can quickly be replaced if the unit was damaged. The cons to really consider are that leaks are rare, but they're more likely due to the gaskets, and also this unit will have a higher pressure drop than a shell and tube heat exchanger. Welded plate and frame. There's a variation of the plate and frame heat exchanger that I just want to briefly cover. That's the welded plate and frame type. In this type, the plates are all welded together in one block. They therefore cannot be dismantled and the heating and cooling capacity is fixed. However, they do allow for much higher pressure and temperature fluids to be used and they minimize the risk of leakage so hazardous fluids can be used. You'll find these mostly in heavy industrial sites, power plants and oil refinery applications. Braze plate heat exchangers. Now these are typically used in smaller applications, however, in recent years this has started to change and larger units are being produced and applied to industry. 
These heat exchangers also use thin plates of metal to separate the fluids, although the plates are braced together to completely seal the unit. No gaskets are used in this design. The brazing and the alignment of the plates forms the seal and dictates which of the channels each fluid can flow into. The materials used, well, the plates in the casing are typically made from stainless steel, but the brazing which joins each of the plates together is usually made from copper. Sometimes it'll also be stainless steel, but the materials used for this type will vary depending on which fluid is being used in the application. Let's have a look at some examples of these. District heating and cooling. The heat interface units which connect individual apartments or homes to heating and cooling networks will usually use a braze plate type heat exchanger. Sometimes large braze plate heat exchangers are used to connect the buildings to the district or heating network. However, the majority of these used are still currently gasket type. Heat pumps. Now heat pumps will often use braze plate type heat exchangers to connect the separated loops together. This is quite common in water source heat pumps with braze plates being used for both the condenser and the evaporator. This separates the different circuits of water, refrigerant and water glycol mixtures, allowing only the thermal energy to indirectly transfer between them. Chillers Chillers have begun to be produced using braze plate heat exchangers. On an air-cooled chiller, the evaporator can often be replaced with a braze plate type, and in water-cooled chillers, both the evaporator and the condenser can be replaced with braze plate type, depending on the size of the cooling load. Chlorifiers and hot water tanks now chlorifiers and hot water tanks are often indirectly connected to heating circuits through braze plate heat exchangers. This separates the two and allows instantaneous hot water to be provided or hot water can be drawn from a storage vessel depending on the building's demand for hot water. So what are the pros and cons to using a braze plate type heat exchanger? Well the pros are that it's less likely to leak because it doesn't have a gasket seal in between, the whole unit is sealed as one. It's also going to have a slightly higher efficiency because there's no rubber gaskets used in between. All the material used is there just to transfer heat. And the lack of gaskets also allows for a more compact design than the gasket type. The cons, well, it's going to be harder to clean because you cannot take this unit apart. Additionally, if the unit was damaged, then the whole thing must be replaced because you cannot get replacement parts for these. Microplate heat exchangers. Microplate heat exchangers can be either gasket or braze plate design. They are the next evolution of plate heat exchangers providing the greatest heat exchanger efficiency to date. It's actually the plate which characterizes this type of heat exchanger. Usually the heat exchanger has a pattern like a chevron or a fishbone which is pressed into the plate to increase the heat transfer. Microplate heat exchangers instead use small dimples. There are a number of reasons why this is a great design. Firstly, this allows the fluids to spread across the plates much more evenly. This maximizes the heat transfer surface area. This also causes the fluids to flow much more turbulently, which again increases the heat transfer. The small dimples increase the surface area, allowing more opportunity for heat to transfer. These design improvements allow lighter and smaller heat exchangers to be used. Applications for microplate heat exchangers. You can find these type of plate heat exchangers being used in heat pumps, VRF units, and also chiller evaporators and condensers. So what are the pros and cons for the microplate heat exchanger? Well, the pros are that it's lighter and smaller, it also has a reduced refrigerant charge, and it has a higher heat transfer efficiency. The cons, well, it's harder to clean, although it's rarely needed because of the fluids used and also the turbulence caused by the design. The whole unit must be replaced if it was damaged for the braze plate type. And again, you can't increase or decrease the capacity for the braze plate type either. Okay, before we wrap up, I just want to remind you to sign up for a free Danfoss Learning Profile. Doing so gets you access to literally hundreds of engineering focus e-lessons, including several about heat exchangers. It also enables you to earn certifications, so go give it a try now, links are in the video description below. At the beginning of the video, I asked you why do fluids typically flow in opposite directions? Well, there are two common configurations, which are parallel and counterflow design. In parallel flow, the fluids both flow in the same direction, so the temperature difference is large at the beginning, but diminishes along the length until both fluids are at the same temperature, then no more heat can be transferred. However, in counterflow design, the two fluids flow in opposite directions, resulting in a lower inlet temperature difference, but as the two fluids travel through the heat exchanger in opposite directions, the fluids constantly passes newer fluids, which has a higher or lower temperature. This is what causes the nearly constant temperature difference along the entire length of the heat exchanger, making it much harder for the two fluids to reach the same temperature. That means that the thermal energy is being refreshed constantly, allowing more time for more heat to transfer over, 
and for smaller and more efficient heat exchangers to be designed. Okay guys, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this and it has helped you. If so, then please don't forget to like, subscribe and share and leave your questions below. Also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and of course theengineeringmindset.com.